All right, guys, we are starting off this video strong. We have an oil bypass kit. We got all the stuff here, the Loctite, all the stuff. Uh, we're working on getting the lengths. I got the cap here. That's going to be the first thing we do. Um, thinking about putting the, I've seen a lot of 6 7 guys and 5 9 guys, so put the oil filter right here. Unfortunately, this kit does not come with brackets. You get that. That is all you get, and you got to make your own bracket. So I have to get with him tomorrow on making a bracket, but I know we're going to use utilize these two holes right here. I just got the oil, the filter off, so I'm going to make the lines a while because I know exactly where I want to put this thing. Obviously, we don't want to put it on the exhaust side because of heat. If that thing ever lets loose, because I have seen guys have these things come loose, which this one i think they did fix the problem uh the uh the little little filter element that's in there that holds onto these filters they actually come loose and uh i've seen plenty of cases on that but this one they don't have that issue but still if the filter ever comes loose for some reason it's going to shoot oil all over the exhaust it could catch a fire so we're going to put it on the intake side i saw another guy decided to put his right here on the frame i don't trust that being truck actually gets driven we're gonna put it right here it's out of the elements it's safe it's in the engine bay it's not gonna cause any problems so I'm gonna get that screwed in new oil filter and then that can turn and twist any which way you want so I'm gonna try to find a good spot we're gonna cut this we're gonna make the other one so you guys can see this this will screw on counterclockwise onto the hose. Use a liberal amount of oil, screw it in, all good. Unfortunately, they don't give you a bunch of 90s like this. Um, they give you these, which that one, uh, that one's a 90, that one's a 45. So that's the one we decided to use in the top. We got the 90 right there. And then on this one, we're just going to use these two 90s rather than this guy down here. Yeah, they send you two of these and two of these. So this is the ones we're going to use on there. So I was trying to get inspiration for where to put this uh, to see if anybody else has found any new areas since we've installed one last time. It's been a hot minute since I've done one of these. But changed my mind. I didn't realize that I got two of these 90s and I thought there was only one. So we're going to use these little 90s in this and then I went and traded this one out because I didn't see that I had 90s. I thought they were both 45s. So went and installed it in there. It's a nice little clip on that. Don't worry, she's just a little dirty. Cleaning her off, but I'm gonna work on getting the length, cut this down, make the next one, and then we'll start fucking around with a bracket probably tomorrow. All right, so once you've screwed that on counterclockwise, you're gonna use a liberal amount of oil. Grab a wrench, shove her in there, and then put that down nicely. Figure out what size I had. I think it was 9 16 And basically just screw it in there. Uh, you're gonna to wanna to back that off a half a turn. I forget if I said or not. All right, just like that. Fresh, clean oil. Yet another oil filter. Amsoil says the same thing. Don't pre-fill your oil filters. I don't know why people even think that's a question. The manufacturer tells you not to do it. Why do you do it? All right, that's hose number one. So this is about where I'm gonna want this first one. You can see it kind of sits like right over top. Uh, we're gonna make the bracket right there. Comes back a little bit. I don't want it too short, don't want it too long. We could bring it out here, but not gonna do that. We will see. So let me get that unscrewed and start working on the next one. All right, so we got the fitting in. What we're gonna do is run it down underneath and through the grid heater wire loom. So I'll show you guys this. Basically, all we're doing, for you guys that are gonna have a hard time, you're gonna try to fit this on here as nice and neat as possible. I couldn't do that shit one-handed. Put your drill backwards. And then we're bottomed out. 
go about half a turn. I'm gonna go a little bit more. There we go. And then lubrication, lube the shit out of it. Don't shove it in there dry. All right, coolant bypass installed. Just gonna sit right about there. We have the little metal clippy things. And there you go. Might put something around that one. Or uh, at the very least, like move that one because it might be a little bit of a sharp edge. So now if she's up there, yeah, that's a lot better. That's a lot better. And there is plenty of hose left over. You guys will see that little coil. We're starting to stack some parts for uh, what's going back with them. But coolant bypass installed. I will make the bracket sometime tomorrow. Probably just take some 90 or some channel or see if there's something we can't buy aftermarket that'll fit those two holes. Fabrication takes time. So I'm not gonna start it for a while until afterwards, but it is away from the exhaust manifold for the most part. And if there is any issues with heat or he needs anything, you know, or worries about it, we can always throw the heat shield back on. But that's generally why we get the new exhaust manifolds so we don't have to deal with that. So next thing, we have a couple other parts, odds and ends to do. So let's start get to it. All right, so we got some controversy because I know what I was told to do and I know what I have here. So this is correct. We are installing frame mounted fuel filter and water separator. And we were supposed to install a fleece, you know, fuel filter delete. But then I see this and I'm just like, okay. Now, keep in mind, 1R0750, 1R0750. My head is telling me it does not make sense to install a second one of these to set this aside. I'm fine with that. But, I was told to install this. So, I think that's what I'm going to go ahead and just do. These are all of the fittings and screws and washers and all that fun stuff. So... That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to keep following the instructions because I, I don't know why this got put into the kit. I, I don't know what's, what the thing is with that. Uh, this goes with that. This is the same kit that I pretty much did on my 12 valve swap. You guys remember that when I was running the oil. But instead of running to fuel filters, I was running to oil filters. Basically these, uh, one goes here. And then one has little adjustments side to side, and one goes there, all right? And then this bolts on the frame like so. So, I know where I put mine. I think with his, actually his has a flatbed, so that makes it a lot easier. I'm gonna get with him tomorrow, I think. And uh, I'm gonna assemble that a while. But I think what I'm gonna do is, I'm pretty sure, I might have ended up putting, hmm, I don't remember. I don't remember if I put it up under here or if I put it back here. I'll have to go back on my videos and figure it out. But I'm gonna assemble this whole thing, get it all ready and whatnot, make sure the hardware is good to go. We're gonna install this a while. And then tomorrow, when everyone's awake, because it is Monday morning now, it's like 2.30 in the morning, I wanna see where he wants to install this, and I'm going to, actually, no, I'm not gonna verify, I'm just gonna do it. This is gonna go in place of the factory fuel filter. All right, pretty standard, and then you got this collar in the middle that you can break loose so that both sides can be tight. And we got that in there, adjustments all correctly. And uh, as you guys have stated before, the water separator goes first and the fuel filter goes second. Why? Because the fuel filter is a smaller micron. So it's gonna go through the big micron filter first. So let's say this one's a 20 just for shits and giggles. And then that one is, I don't know, like a two. I think that one's a two, but keep that in mind. So that makes this super easy. I can install that. And then they give you these nice little self tapper bolts. They only give you three of them. They only give you three because uh, they do give you two of the three of these as well. So we're gonna go throw those away. 
this is all done. This is where we're gonna leave it. Oh, other than these guys here. So I gotta install these guys on the side. They're an O-ring fit, and then they're a push lock. So I wanted to put, I think right there is about where the best spot to put this bracket is. I wanted to put it on the other side and hug, but unfortunately when you install this, it's not gonna work. And he said, let's put it on the inside of the frame instead of the out, because you know we could hide it out here somewhere but if you guys look we're going to be tying into these fuel lines somewhere uh, i have not quite uh gone through and gotten an answer yet on how we're going to do that but at the bare minimal let's at least get these things installed and see what the game plan is on top of that because i know when i did mine i had the 12 valve and the injector the fuel pump was up here the lift pump so i just ran a sump to the filters up to the truck well in this case the lift pump is still in the tank and we're not doing a fast and we're not doing a pull pump so i don't know to tie into the big one should be the feed obviously this one's the brake line so this one should be the feed this one should be the return so we're gonna have to somehow tie into that one to come over to here to come back in and then tie back into it so we'll see how we're going to do that. In the meantime, let's at least just get it mounted. All right, so I ran it up as high as I could. It still clears the bolts. I hear something out there. I don't think that's Josh. But there you go, filter first. Now the thing is, if it doesn't clear the T case, which I'm pretty sure it will, um, worst case scenario, we could literally flip this and it would clear on the outside here other than this. So I don't know, I, I think we're fine there. All right, so here's where we're at with this thing. We have the filter system mounted and we have the oil bypass. Everything is all said and done. I have the parts on order. They will be here today, which uh, I got them from the dealership, I had to. So we got the clip and we got the factory coolant hose. So tonight when we come back in, it's uh, I think it's, it's about one in the morning right now. So they will be here today from the dealership. They're gonna give me a call. Um, expensive little bastard, but I made sure to get him the proper part and not just some random coolant hose. And basically, yeah, like I, I could throw some random like, go and grab like one of those hoses from auto, but it's like, that's such a hot area. It's like, I'm gonna get it. I got him the OEM stuff and we got the clip coming. So I should have ordered two clips, but cause one for Peggy, but I don't know what to do with that one is yet. But uh, once that's in, basically the transmission's in. We're pretty much done with everything. All I gotta do is make an L bracket. Unfortunately, I don't have scra the scrap steel laying around. I have a bunch of scrap steel, but for me to make him a bracket, it's gonna look like absolute shit. So I'm probably gonna go to the steel place tomorrow and uh, measure something out. Cause like I have all of this pretty thick stuff, but I need something that's like three inches wide um, and a three inch base and then up to maybe like 10 inches or so. And then we have all of this stuff here, which I could make something out of this. But like I said, I'm not trying to put together a shit product. Um, I'd rather spend a little bit more and actually like get a proper bracket. Uh, like I said, I can make one, I can weld something together and whatnot. But at the end of the day, it's I can go out and buy the part for the same amount of money that it would cost me to make it. And it's probably gonna be done, it basically save time. Um, I can go down to the scrap yard and have them come up with something and sell me something that's just gonna work. That's pretty much the last two things. And then we just gotta put the shocks on. So we're gonna do the shocks and potentially, I'll get with him on a control arm, but everything's pretty much done besides putting this transmission in. Once the trans is in, we can then wait on the drive shaft and then this thing's pretty much ready to drive out. So silly me, I didn't even show you guys the fuel filter delete, that little fleece unit that is right in there. So here's the thing. You can see there's a feed, there's a feed. Basically all this thing does is collect the returns. So you can see there is a fuel return from the rail plug. There is the return from the pump. And then there's the return from the back of the head and then that goes down to the return. So that is a feed right there. So pretty much what we're gonna do is take this feed. Actually, you know what? I might be, uh, 
One of them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the bottom one. So this one right there, that's the feed for the pump. Uh, gonna have to take that and disconnect it and basically run a line. I also got to plug the bottom of that. So don't let me forget, but I got to run basically that to the front of the fuel filters. So he did say we do have to get a line for that. And then we'll have to run from the pump into that. And then the return just stays the same. You can see somebody had a, uh, an auxiliary tank at one point. So that's pretty much where we're at for the night. Um, he did ask me and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna plug the battery in for a second because this trans he's had for a little bit. So this truck has 210,288 miles and he asked me to record the VIN. It's the last six of the VIN, G191992, last seven of the VIN. That way in case something ever happens to this transmission, which we're not, I was gonna install it in this, in this video. I don't think we're going to because I'm still waiting on the parts and that's pretty much where we're at with this thing. Just waiting on a coolant piece, the clip, and some line for that, and a bracket for that. So it's pretty much all there. We also got all new shocks, Fox shocks for this thing. Uh, I said about a lift. We're not doing a lift, we're just replacing the shocks. So you can see these are the rear, and then these with the point are the front. So we got all the bushings and the whole kit and caboodle, and then all of this. So. I'm not going to film the rest of it. I'm just going to film like the end result of pretty much uh, going to finish that up. Got to put that plug in before I forget. You guys are terrible at reminding me to finish things up. So I think this one here should be the right size. It is not the right size. So I just need to go and grab the correct Allen for that, which I should have one over here. Uh, that one's too small. Huh, I don't, uh, well, I guess I better start doing some digging. 